locally. Uh, so back in 2018, you could buy these in Australia, but they're all sort of imported and it's all still pretty new. But now, this year, uh, that infographic looks quite different. There's plenty of companies doing it. Uh, they're located in each state. Uh, there's good support. Uh, the application's proven. Um, it, you know, it, t it ticks all the boxes. Um, I also talked about dominoes, and I, I, this was just to remind me to say that um, having a gimmick robot is okay. Uh, and you've got to remember, those, those robots are actually quite cheap. They're like $50 a day. Right? So you're going to pay a waiter $30 plus dollars an hour. Okay, so if you can do a, do a shift with less waiters or do it differently, that's, a, that's an, easy, uh, an easy benefit to, to identify. Okay, let's look at the Poodle robots. Poodle are on display here at the show, just a bit further down this way. And they help have a whole range of different robots. And I'm going to show you a case study here and show you the data from this restaurant here in Melbourne, actually. And this uh, restaurant had two, two waiters, uh, about a 40 table restaurant, it was an Asian cuisine, open seven days, and they were leasing the robots $50, $100 a day for two robots. And uh, I got the data from the restaurant. And you can't read this, I know, but this is the, the day of one month. So the number of trips that each ro that the robots took each day, 56.95 kilometers in one month. That's a lot of running around a restaurant. So 56 kilometers, that's 56 kilometers that the staff didn't have to do, right? So they're less tired because they stay out in the dining area serving the customers. Guess what? they get more orders. You know what it's like, you get towards the end of the evening, oh, should we have dessert? Can't find the waiter. Oh, forget it, we'll go home, right? Happens. So by having the waiters, the human waiters, staying out in the dining area all the time, and then anything coming or going back to the kitchen is done by the robot, it changes your service levels uh, and gives you more orders. So that's, I think, another good example, and the cost benefit's quite easy to define. Um, and easy to identify. And there are a number of ways to, to use these. For example, you might have a venue which has a section way down the end that no one ever uses because it's too far away from the kitchen. Guess what? You can open it up. You've got your delivery app, your uh, ordering apps these days. Um, and in fact, I had a discussion with the, the uh, managing director of uh, Me and You, you know, the, uh, the QR code ordering systems. Wouldn't it be great if you could link that so that when you've finished your dinner, um, you could call a robot to take the, the plates away. So the robot turns up to your table and you just load everything on it and off it goes. Easy. You've already got the customers, you know, going to the, and ordering at the counter and going and picking it up at the counter. Why don't you get, get them the robot, get them to organise clearing the table as well? You know, why not? You know, these are all cost factors and saving factors where you can maintain service levels without you know, extra labour costs. And you, you can enhance the experience uh, by using some of these automation tools. Uh, the other thing, of course, is uh, you, when you're clearing tables, you can have the robot follow the, the human uh, around the venue and you load it up and it goes off to the kitchen and another robot replaces it. And so the person's clearing, clearing, clearing. I think all the glasses you have to clear it above. <laughs> you have it, you know, sort of the person running backwards and forwards all the time, they just load a robot and send it back. The next one's there, load it up and send it back. So lots of different ideas that you can use to start to think about how you can use it in your venue. And the only way to really know if it's going to work is to try it. And because it's so cheap, it's, you know, it's not a hard thing to do. So that's all I wanted, wanted to cover today. Um, but uh, the, the message, I guess, is don't be afraid of this, some of this technology. Really think about how it could be used in your venue and your situation. Thank you. Anyone, any questions at all? You've all done, had a good day. You can have the rest of the day off. Thank you. <laughs> that was um, very interesting. Um, oops, sorry to my viewers, I actually dropped the phone accidentally halfway through. Um, 
Yeah, so that's interesting. The bits at the beginning I actually um, missed out when I started videoing were the automated coffee machine versus the human uh, making coffee and the time it took um, to do so. And there was also the um, flippy robotic burger flipping and fry maintenance um, machine which maintains the the fry station and the burger flipping at McDonald's. Very interesting about the um, EV charging stations um, that are mobile and actually go to car spots and reserve car spots and then you can just charge up. We should have an EV charging station at the front of our uh, apartment block because there's plenty of room for it and it's close to a main road so uh, it would be a very good idea to actually have that in place, uh, either the mobile one or a fixed one. As long as it's not on the right hand side uh, of the building and it's on the left because um, there's been a lot of accidents happening on the right hand side of the, of the car park in front. So yeah, it'd be a drive-in, drive-out. Um, in terms of the number of uh, robotic waiters around at the shows, last year there are actually, I think, at least two companies with two different styles of um, wait, waiter robots or robotic waiters. And this year um, there's only one, and I don't believe there is the same amount. I think there would be less than last year. But last year there was an explosion of uh, robot waiters at the Fine Food Festival, or Fine Food Australia and trade, trade show. Sorry, I keep calling it a festival. It's actually not. Um, it's classified as a trade show. So thanks for watching, and now I'm just going to have a final look around before I leave to go back to um, the YHA where I was staying and to come, maybe sit down, recharge my phone and everything, have a, um, a proper drink of water and retrieve my luggage and then it will be time for me to head off to Southern Cross Station to board the XPT train back to um, Sydney overnight in first class. Thanks for watching again.